In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the rear brakes on this Volvo S60. Let's get started. To begin, we have to put the parking brake in service mode. So, grab a scan tool of choice that actually is able to do parking brake service, plug it in, and then turn the ignition on to the run position, so the second position. And you do that by holding this button down. There we go. Without your foot on the brake, if you have your foot on the brake, it's going to start. Then we're going to go into maintenance uh, on this particular scan tool and then brake service. On this one, it's pretty straightforward. Once it's in, we have to go to activate slash deactivate service mode. We're going to click continue, continue. It's telling you exactly what to do. It's telling you the ignition position and other parameters that need to be met. So we're going to click continue and we are going to now activate service mode. Once you do this, you'll hear the parking brake motor release and that's exactly what you want. There you go, it's been activated. Now we can safely replace the rear brakes. At this point, you can turn the ignition off and if you choose to, unplug the scan tool. That way the battery of the vehicle doesn't drain too low. Let's remove the wheel, take off all five of your 19 millimeter lug bolts. On the last one, make sure you hold the wheel, otherwise it may fall off. Remove the wheel. Now take a 13 millimeter wrench, break these caliper to bracket bolts free. So in my case here, the entire slider pin is spinning. Let's see if this one does it too. Okay, so it broke free a little bit, but it is spinning the entire slider. So we're gonna have to hold this. You can either use pliers or a thin wrench if you have one. I am using a 5 8 wrench just because that's all I have for thin wrenches that'll hold on to this. But at this point, I can remove this bolt completely. Take this one out and do the same to the top one. Unfortunately, because of the parking brake motor here, I cannot fit my ratcheting wrench. That's okay. Remove that. And now the caliper should be free to pull off. And we'll set it aside right on top here. You just don't want to put a strain on the electrical connector or the brake hose. Now you can remove your old pads. Sometimes you might need a pry bar to get these out. If they're stuck, pry this out and remove it. Now use a 15 millimeter socket and remove the two bolts that hold the caliper bracket onto the knuckle. And with both of these removed, remove the caliper bracket, set it aside, we'll clean it in a little bit. Now let's remove the T50 Torx bolt that holds this rotor onto the hub. If yours is rusty or stuck, take a punch and tap right in the center of it. Obviously make sure the punch is bigger than the cutout of the Torx socket, um, well cutout, because otherwise you'll damage it and the shocks will break it free. If you have an impact that'll fit on here, that also might help. A lot of times these do get rusty. As you can see, this one is a little bit rusty. We'll clean the threads up. Now we should be able to pull the rotor off, wiggle it off, set it aside. Now let's clean the hub surface. Well, actually this one's in very good condition, so there isn't much to clean, but I will just scuff up the surface rust here with a wire brush. If yours is in poor condition, you'd want to consider uh, using something more abrasive. Just make sure that there is a flat surface when you're done so the rotor can mount nice and flush when you're done. Usually around this inner ridge here is where the rust tends to build up. And focus on this outer ridge as well. In the center here, it's just painted. You don't have to scrape that paint off. Rinse it off with a brake parts cleaner. Once it's dried off, let's apply some anti-seize to the surface so it doesn't corrode in the future. Try to avoid getting it inside the holes for the lug bolts on the threads. If a little bit gets in there, that's okay. I will, however, put some 
in the hole for the set screw on the rotor. And once you give it a thin coating, you should be good to go. Take your rotor, line it up with the set screw threads. Take the set screw and start it in. Hold the rotor in place and tighten this up. Make sure it's snug. You don't have to over tighten this, of course. This just is here to hold the rotor on nice and flush until you put the wheel on. At this point, you would want to wipe off any oils that are on the rotor. Ours have a uh, different coating on them, not oil-based, but I will still clean them off. It's always a good idea. Clean the front braking surface, and then if you saturate your rag, you can spin this and clean the rear. Now let's clean up the caliper bracket. You can remove these anti-rattle clips, the old ones, set them aside. And you want to clean this surface up right here. You can see there's some uh, rust buildup here. This side is okay, so that's good, but I noticed that one side has a lot more rust than the other, so I'm going to make sure they're nice and flat and uh, free of any rust because if this builds up too much, it'll actually start squishing the pads and then they won't slide in and out properly as they should. Because it's not that severe for me, I'm just going to use a wire brush and do the best I can with it. As you can see, it's doing its job very well, but if you had a lot of rot buildup, you might consider sanding that down. You can also use a wire wheel. Rinse it with some brake parts cleaner to get all the dust off. And before we apply grease here, Let's clean up the slider pins, remove this, and wipe it off. I like to do these one at a time because in some applications they're different. In this particular one, they are not, but you never know. I also like to take the boot off, clean all this old grease in here. And to do this, you can put some brake parts cleaner in and just use the old pin. Work it in there. This should melt most of that grease. And then you can uh, rinse this out in your collection bucket. I also like to put a rag right through the boot so I can get all the grease out of this. It's pretty good, it doesn't have to be perfect. You wanna also clean right around this ridge where the boot sits. That way it'll seal up nice and won't allow water to get in. Before you put the boot on, add a little bit of grease in here and around the, uh, the lip where the boot actually sits. Now let's put grease inside the boot. I'm using silicone paste, but you can use any other grease that is rated for brakes or high temperatures, really. Now let's put the boot over here. Make sure it sits nice and flush on there. Put a little bit of grease on the pin, not a whole lot, and Slide it into the boot in the caliper. Give it a few twists so the grease can work its way in there. Make sure it slides smoothly, and it does. Now you want to do the same to the other one. Now you want to take a little bit of grease. This is a little too much, so I'll try not to put all of it on. And lubricate the areas that we cleaned earlier, right where the anti-rattle clips sit. And you want to do this to prevent rust from building up. So. Add a little thin layer of grease. If you put too much, the anti-rattle clips, when they go on, they'll actually squish some of the grease out and they'll get on the rotor. That is not what you want. You want it to stay on here. Do the same to the other side. Nice thin layer. And then you want to take the new anti-rattle clips, line them up, and snap them down. Make sure they lock in. They should be nice and snug on here. And of course, do that to both sides. If they don't fit, it's probably because of this inner tab that has to move and uh, basically hook around the caliper bracket. So there you have it. This is now ready to install, so let's put it back on the vehicle. Take that caliper bracket that you just cleaned up and prepared, line it up with the two mounting holes, and put the bolts through. Snug them up. The torque for these is 81 foot-pounds. Before we put the pads in 
and put the caliper on. We need to push this piston back, which is why we had to activate service mode to retract that parking brake motor. You want to use a caliper depression tool and very slowly push it in. That's bottomed out right there. Release it and there you have it. Now you can take your pads, they're both the same so it doesn't matter which one goes where. Slide them in, they should slide in nice and smooth and they should pivot around freely, they shouldn't fall off, but they shouldn't be restricted. If, it, if they are restricted, that means you didn't clean up this area enough and like I said earlier, the rust is building up and being squishing the pads down, basically preventing them from moving back and forth freely. Now if you want to, you can put a little bit of grease on the face of the piston. This sometimes prevents noise and uh, other unwanted uh, vibrations transferring through and on these two ears of the caliper. Like I said, optional, but sometimes it's a good idea. Now slide the caliper right over the pads and with these uh, anti-rattle clips, you might need to pry them out of the way a little bit so the caliper can fit both top and bottom. Now take the two caliper, two bracket bolts, thread those in and bottom them out. If your threads are uh, corroded on these, clean them up and they should thread in nice and smooth now. As you can see, the torque for these is 26 foot pounds. Let's put the wheel back on, line it up with the lug bolt threads. Start one in so it'll hold the wheel on with one started in. You can start the rest in. Make sure you do them all by hand or start them all by hand so that they don't cross thread. And then we'll bottom them out in a cross pattern and torque them to 103 foot pounds. With light pressure on the wheel, once again, 103 foot pounds is the torque. Double check them. Now let's pump up the brake pedal and deactivate service mode. Pump up the brake pedal so the pads can seat right up against that rotor. Give it a few pumps until it's firm. Now do the same thing, turn the ignition on. And if your scan tool stayed on, it should still be on this screen with the uh, service mode. So let's deactivate. It will go through a sequence of engaging and disengaging the parking brake, so just wait until it says that it's done. That's it. It's been deactivated, so now you're good to go. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.